The holiday season is around the corner and a bunch of us would be booking tickets right now. And when I was booking a flight from Mumbai to Delhi, I came across one thing which caught my attention. For a sum of just 10 rupees, the booking website said that I could offset my carbon footprint. Now what does that mean? A carbon offset is basically a credit that you can buy to decrease your carbon footprint. When you obtain carbon offset credits that are equal to your carbon footprint, it makes it a carbon neutral activity. Now we all know that flying puts pressure on the environment. Around 2.5% of global carbon dioxide emissions come from air travel. If you're flying from say London to New York and back, each passenger basically generates a whopping 986 kgs of carbon dioxide just in that one return flight. There are over 50 countries in the world where the average person there emits less carbon dioxide in the whole year. So there's pressure on the aviation industry to go greener and reduce their carbon footprint, especially as countries and companies commit to net zero emissions in the next few years. In fact, the global aviation sector itself wants to reach net zero by 2050. But is there actually a way in which you can fly green? This is exactly what we explore in this video, so like, share and subscribe and keep watching. There are two main ways in which airlines and aviation companies are promising to reduce their carbon footprint. The first one is giving travellers an option to pay a green fare. Now this is especially popular among large companies and corporations who are pledging to reduce their carbon footprint and they are counting carbon in a number of activities that they are doing. In fact, according to a survey, India ranks third in the number of companies who are committing to become net zero within five years. Companies are choosing flights with low emissions, they are putting their companies up in eco-friendly hotels and they are using EVs as a mode of commute. Many companies are especially checking with travel portals how much is their carbon footprint on specific flights. So for these companies who want to embrace environmentally conscious practices, booking green tickets is another way to offset parts of their carbon footprint. We've seen corporates opting in for uh more sustainable or eco-friendly options even if it's slightly uh, a premium if they have to pay a slight premium over the normal costing so we've seen that conscious shift in behavior but it's not just companies there's been a rise in mindful travelers as well who are planning vacations using sustainability as a criteria for deciding their destinations their airlines and their hotels oh yes we've seen a actually a larger spike in the individual travelers who are going towards uh, these options i'm seeing this trend a lot more from our metro and tier one customers where they're consciously opting for for a particular location they're consciously opting for sustainable and eco-friendly options even overseas airlines like Lufthansa, which is Europe's biggest airline, are offering options of green fares, which means that travellers can choose to pay more to offset their carbon footprints. There has been criticism from some quarters saying that it's difficult to verify if that carbon footprint is actually being offset and that the green fares which are offered by airlines are currently too cheap to really be effective. But airlines are now going the extra mile, pun intended, to prove that they are actually working towards sustainability. And that brings us to our second point, which is using sustainable aviation fuel. Vistara was recently in the news for becoming the first Indian airline to operate a long haul flight using SAF. First of all, what is sustainable aviation fuel? SAFs are biofuel, which can be used to power aircraft. Their properties are similar to jet fuel, but they would leave a smaller carbon footprint. They are basically made from non-fossil fuel alternatives like biomass or used cooking oil. In fact, now airlines like Swiss are even collaborating to bring solar aviation fuel into the market. According to analysis by the International Civil Aviation Organization, SAF is basically the aviation industry's best bet at even trying to reach net zero by 2050. It can reduce carbon dioxide emissions by up to 80%. So a number of governments and firms are now working to scale up SAF production. In India, which is the third largest aviation market, carriers like Indigo and Spicejet have operated trial flights with SAF blended fuel, which basically means SAF along with a certain percentage of conventional jet fuel. But while SAF is being spoken about frequently right now, it accounts for less than 1% of fuel that's actually used on airplanes. 
at this point it can cost up to about 8 times as much as normal aviation fuel since its production is not being done at scale right now so how airlines are working this is by offsetting the burden on the environment with a mix of both the measures that we've discussed like 80% of the green fare you pay would be used for climate protection projects like planting trees or investing in solar farms or biogas plants and other such projects and 20% would be for buying sustainable aviation fuel according to the estimates by the international air transport association SAF could make up around 65% of the reductions in the emission which are needed to reach the aviation industry's net zero by 2050 target. But it would require a huge increase in production to meet the demand. The largest acceleration in SAF production is expected in the 2030s when policy support becomes more global. So basically, yes, you may be able to fly green in the future, but for the next about 20-25 years. flying is going to put pressure on our environment